Deja vu is a common phenomenon that most people will experience at least once in their lifetime. But what causes this strange sensation? Today, we'll discuss some of the common theories and reasons, discuss its connection to seizures, and why some people feel like they can predict the future. Next, on Technically a Conversation. you're listening to Technically a Conversation, a podcast where we share an interesting topic or story with each other and hope you find it interesting as well. I'm one half of your host, Jose, and I'm joined, as always, by my lovely co-host, Isela. How are you doing today? I am doing fantastical. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Good. This episode drops on July 4th. You know what that is, right? That is Alice in Wonderland Day. It is. And I actually learned that from your wonderful Alice in Wonderland episode. Good. (laughs) So anybody that hasn't heard it yet, go check it out. It's super dark. I'm very proud of you, Isela. Yeah. (laughs) I rarely go dark, but (laughs) the times I do, you know, sometimes you're going to wish I didn't. (laughs) Some of the details shared were a little spooky, but overall, I appreciated the darkness of it. Always informative. That's what we do. That's right. (laughs) Quick reminder about our contest before we get started. If you enjoy our show, take two minutes to leave us a review. What should they do again, Isela? Pause this lovely podcast. Leave us a favorable review wherever you're listening. Take a quick screenshot and shoot it on over to any of our socials. They're all listed. You can get the details at technicallyaconversation.com. And good luck, everybody. Good luck, indeed. And once we get 25 reviews, we'll do a drawing and give the winner a sexy, (laughs) technically a conversation t-shirt. So again, all the details are at technicallyaconversation.com or just check the show notes. And to those of you that have already left us a review, thank you. Thank you so much, guys. Quick shout out to the queens, Elena and Erica, the Duke, Stephen B, ContraZoom Pod Podcast, JCK, Antonio, And Irene A. Thank you for all your comments and sharing our posts on your social media. Thank you, guys. You know you make me want to shout, kick my heels. (laughs) (laughs) With all that business out of the way, ready to get started? Let's do it. Great. Let's get started. (laughs) So Isela, have you ever met anyone new before? Anyone new? Yes. (laughs) Have you ever gone somewhere that you've never visited before? Yes, I have. In the process of talking to this stranger or visiting this new place, did it ever feel like you had met this person or visited this new place before? Like deja vu. I have. I'm sure I have. Did it feel kind of eerie or strange, like you were reliving this experience? Yes. Usually it feels like I have had it in like a dream. Well, I want you to know, Isela that you're not alone. (laughs) According to WebMD, link in the show notes, about 60 to 70% of people in good health experience some form of deja vu during their lifetime. Mm. And I'm not talking about the Olivia Rodrigo or Ingve Momstein songs here. I'm talking about the sensation that you've already experienced something that you're currently experiencing. Usually it's a familiar sight or sound that can trigger the feeling. What makes it frustrating is that the feeling of deja vu disappears quickly, which makes it hard to recall or pinpoint specific details about the experience. Is there an event in particular that stands out that you can remember when you felt like you experienced deja vu? Not anything specifically that comes to mind, but I know I remember thinking and saying aloud, wait a second, like I almost want to pause reality. And I remember saying, wait a second, I think I have had this dream. Like, I think I've dreamt this before. Yeah, I have definitely wish I could have those Zach Morris moments also where I do the timeout Mm -hmm. and everything just freezes. (laughs) Yes. Now, I know I mainly experienced it when I was younger. It was rare that I experienced it in a new place. I would mainly experience it when I would be talking to someone and felt like I had had that conversation before. And it was always an eerie feeling. Sometimes I wasn't sure if I was repeating myself. Apparently, 
I have a tendency to do that. <laughs> smells would trigger deja vu for me as well. I would be at someone's house and a certain smell would cause it and I would feel like I was no longer present, almost like if I had been transported to another time in my life. It was only momentary, but it felt like those scenes in a movie where someone is having a flashback and it wasn't until the other person said my name a few times and snapped their fingers that I became present. Were your experiences ever like that? Almost identical. Really? Yes, absolutely. Okay, good. For a moment there, I thought it was just me and maybe I was having a stroke or something. That's what, no, it was worded perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> Looking back, do you feel that most of your deja vu happened when you were younger? I know it definitely happened when I was younger, but I still feel like it happened. So I can't, I can't say the majority of it has happened there. Well, deja vu happens most often to younger people, primarily those between the ages of 15 and 25 years old. It's also most common in people that travel a lot or regularly remember their dreams. So that automatically made me think of you. That is very me. Both accounts. Indeed. People who are tired or stressed are also more prone to deja vu. People tend to feel the sensation of deja vu most often in the evenings or on the weekends. Now, for those that might not know, deja vu is a French term, which means already seen. And in a time before science, people used to believe that it was a sign of a potential psychic phenomenon. While the exact cause of deja vu is still unknown, there are a lot of theories and a lot we do know about this phenomenon. And these are always my favorite types of topics to cover, the ones where we don't have a definitive answer, but we have a lot of clues. Yes. It's like in that episode of Salute Your Shorts, where Butnik is able to put a jigsaw puzzle together upside down. I think the reasoning that he had was that the picture was just a distraction. But once he had all the pieces together, he was able to flip it over and look at the big picture. These were the types of life lessons that only Salute Your Shorts was able to provide. <laughs> Much like Butnik's jigsaw puzzle philosophy, we have a lot of pieces, we just don't have the big picture yet. So let's take a page out of Butnik's philosophy book and see what pieces we do have. Now, memories get stored in the temporal lobe of the brain. This part of the brain helps us recognize familiar experiences. While scientists have yet to prove that deja vu experiences are a result of memories stored in the temporal lobe, they have found a correlation. Scientists conducted an experiment using the video game, The Sims. Are you familiar with this game? I think so. Isn't that just a, like a simulated world? Yes. It's pretty much an early version of virtual reality, where you create characters and build houses and cities and stuff for them. I never personally played it. I only played SimCity, but from screenshots I've seen of The Sims, it seems like it was very different. Got it. The scientists would create virtual reality scenarios based on the world of The Sims, and many of the participants ended up experiencing deja vu tied to scenes resembling ones they viewed earlier. Since many people believe that deja vu is tied to psychic phenomenon, they tested this too and found that individuals were not any more likely to guess correct paths or have more accurate answers than the general population while playing out the virtual reality scenarios. So that's one point for it being related to memories stored in the temporal lobe and one point against them being linked to psychic phenomenon. Let's talk about the rare link between deja vu and seizures after we return from a quick commercial break. This is Classic Movies Live, the pre-recorded show where we talk about movies that just came out. I'm your host, Jeff, and I'm joined, as always, by my co-host, Pierre. Pierre, what movie are we talking about today? Jeff, what are you talking about? We're recording an ad. Oh, is this an ad for Kicking It With Kendrick, the show where every week we bring on a different expert to talk about the filmography of Anna Kendrick? No, no, this is an ad for Losing It Over Leo, the show where we chronologically go through Leonardo DiCaprio's career from childhood to his Oscars. Are you entirely certain this isn't an ad for CML Classics, episodes of Classic Movies Live that we recorded two years ago? Well, I guess it's an ad for all four at this point. Well, you know what? That just works out because you can find all four of those over on the Heatwave Radio channel on Spotify. Nice. Hello, 
my name is Jamie. My name is Ryan. And we have a podcast called Stories, the True and the Fictional. We talk about stories in the movies. Stories in books. Stories from history. And stories from Crazy Joe down the street. But we also talk to the storytellers. The authors. The filmmakers. Everyday folk with a story to tell. If this sounds like your kind of thing, then check out Stories, the True and the Fictional on Apple Podcasts. Spotify. Welcome back. How was your break, Isela? Did you experience any deja vu during our break? <laughs> no, I did not. It was nice and hydrating, though. Excellent. I saw you kind of getting down a little bit during the commercials. I was, yeah. Okay, good. I couldn't tell if you were dancing having a seizure, or you were touched by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> That's nice. That's what a lot of people say when I dance. Thanks. <laughs> Definitely look like a religious experience. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, since you brought up the term seizures, let's explore that topic a little further. Yes. Now, first of all, I don't want to alarm anyone. Most people experience deja vu with no adverse health effects, but... In very rare cases, deja vu could be a sign of a neurological disorder. Individuals with epilepsy often have seizures that occur in one area of the brain, sometimes in the temporal lobe where memories are stored. Some of these temporal lobe seizures are what are called focal seizures. The thing that makes focal seizures different than what we would typically recognize as a seizure is that they are very brief and the person typically remains awake. So it's very difficult to recognize when someone is having a focal seizure. A person having a focal seizure might be mistaken for just daydreaming or spacing out. In the brain, though, it resembles a traditional seizure in the sense that it's burst of uncontrolled electrical activity that causes nerve cells to misfire. If a person is having a focal seizure and it's in the temporal lobe of the brain, it would produce feelings of deja vu. There are usually signs that you can look for to determine if it's actually a temporal lobe focal seizure or regular deja vu. Some of the signs are sudden unexplained feelings like joy or anger, problems controlling your muscles, twitching your muscles, having sensations that involve vision, taste, smell, hearing, and or touch, and the obvious one, feeling as though you're about to have a seizure. Were you aware that focal seizures were even a thing? I feel like I had never heard of this. I did only because of... When we were talking about, I think it was the medical cannabis, there was one of the little girls that had focal seizures and she would, the mom talked about how it looked like she was daydreaming, but she wasn't. She was actually having a seizure. So that's the only reason why. I don't believe I ever heard about it because it seemed super crazy. And it made me think if some of the times that I'm spaced out, if I'm actually having a seizure and I'm, I'm not daydreaming or something. Are your muscles twitching? I think my muscles twitch regularly. So no, they, I don't think no, that would be a, a sign of it. I don't think they do. Don't worry. <laughs> I'll rely on you to let me know if I'm having a seizure or just spacing out. Right. I'll just give you a little nice little cachetada, a little slap. There you go. I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> In an article on the BBC titled Deja Vu, Eight Things You Probably Haven't Heard Before, link in the show notes, they talk about a woman who is only identified as Lisa from Manchester. She stated that she started experiencing severe episodes of deja vu at the age of 22. You want to know how severe it was? Sure. She would feel deja vu all day. She would wake up in the morning and right away she'd feel the sense of familiarity. Eventually, it kept on getting worse and also started affecting her other senses. It turns out that she was experiencing temporal lobe epilepsy. <laughs> which she was later able to get treatment for. And I have a clip from the BBC website where Lisa talks about her experience. Cool. So I'm going to go ahead and play that. Please don't sue us, BBC. <laughs> <laughs> when I first started experiencing it, I'd wake up in the morning sometimes and straight away I'd feel that sense of familiarity. Sometimes I'd feel like it was there, that, that sense, sense of... <laughs> familiarity. I mean, it was with me the whole day. Lisa is 49 from Hume in Manchester. When she was just 22, she started experiencing some very severe episodes of deja vu. I mean, at first it was really scary. If it happened when you were outside, you'd have to 
carry on, even though you, you could just stand still and watch all this going on that you feel like you've seen before, feel, feel like, like you've seen before. before. If I woke up in the morning and I, and I felt that way, you know, immediately, I would avoid being outside and being with people. My mum has, you know, been there for me throughout. She witnessed the very first time it happened to me and it, it knocked me for six. I walked over to her and put my arms around her and I said, just hold me a minute. It was like I was trying to hold on to reality. <laughs> Honestly, it was that strange, you know. It happened more frequently as it went on. Really intense feelings with it as well, you know. Everything seemed louder, louder, brighter. Taste was affected. Every kind of sensation, you know, I had weird feelings of being bigger than I am. General feeling of this reality is not quite the same, you know, uh, and I can't explain it to anyone. Until finally, Lisa made a chance discovery that explained everything. It was one of those kind of serendipitous moments that you have, that we all have. I didn't go to seek help. It's the only professionals. I, I bought some books. <laughs> I bought books on philosophy and psychology and science and stuff. And I, I had one book. It is The Oxford Companion to the Mind. As soon as I got the book, I, I did that flick thing where you just sort of flick the pages and then open it on a page and I landed on deja vu and I was like oh and it mentioned this type of epilepsy temporal lobe epilepsy I mean everything it described fit with what I was experiencing so I went to the doctor my my local doctor armed with this book <laughs> and said that's what's happening to me. After finding a specialist, medication and support from a group called Epilepsy Action, Lisa managed to control her deja vu. According to psychologist Catherine Loveday, her experience fits exactly into the symptoms of this particular type of epilepsy. A very interesting study found that the deja vu that accompanies epilepsy is actually very similar to the deja vu that the rest of us experience. But what was different was how long the experience went on for. And also they found that uh, patients with epilepsy tended to have other experiences. So sometimes they would have a taste in their mouth or a particular smell or they sometimes had a, a feeling of fear. So for most of us, it's a very fleeting, momentary, slightly intriguing thing. When people have it alongside epilepsy, it, it can be quite prolonged and it can be accompanied by quite unpleasant feelings. It's pretty crazy, huh? That's very interesting. She sounds so normal. <laughs> so <laughs> it really does feel like it could just be anybody. Wow. Yeah, I had never heard of that either until I started doing this research. And I kind of just stumbled upon people having that correlation between seizures and deja vu. I thought that was super crazy. And I thought we would mention it just in case somebody is experiencing that and, you know, maybe it can help somebody. Yeah, especially since I said there was some type of an element of fear being involved, which now makes sense at the beginning of the soundbite. She was saying that she stayed indoors when she had that feeling as if like that's her safe space, her home. You know, to be honest with you, I didn't even notice that she said that. No, she said that. Yeah, she says <laughs> if I, something about if she had that feeling, she stayed in. I guess I'll pay attention when I'm editing this podcast and <laughs> <laughs> pay okay. attention to that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I apologize about all those weird sound effects and the strange stereo panning that they did. I didn't add those. Those were done by the BBC for reasons. Yes. Now, the BBC article states that scientists believe that there is actually a second system in our brains that supervises what is going on in our temporal lobe, almost like a fact-checking system, which helps you realize that you are mistaken in what you are feeling and ends the sensation of deja vu. Well, that would explain why, unless you're Lisa from Manchester, the sensation usually goes away after a few moments. They also have an explanation behind why people who travel seem to experience deja vu more often. And it's because being in unfamiliar places offer the biggest conflict between the strong sensation that something is familiar and the knowledge that it can't possibly be a memory. This is according to Chris Mullen, 
who is a cognitive neuropsychologist that specializes in deja vu. There is also another phenomenon slightly related to deja vu called jamais vu. Did you want to take a guess at what this means, Isela? I don't... Come on, that French 101. Put it to work, girl. I know. It's been such a long time. Oh, wow. <laughs> vu is definitely seen, so I, I don't even know. <laughs> okay, I had never heard of this either. It's kind of strange. It's the experience of knowing something is familiar, yet it feels strange. This is most often experienced when you look at the face of someone you know, and suddenly they look like a stranger. Another common occurrence of this is when you write a word down, and for a moment, it seems like it's misspelled, although it's a word that you know how to spell, and you might have written it countless times. I see you nodding your head. You've, you've experienced that. Not the face part, but I've definitely written a word down and looked at it again thinking, is that right? So it almost looks... It almost looks incorrect. So that that has to be it. <laughs> now, you know, it's called jamais vu. Jamais vu. Interesting. And jamais vu is from the French term meaning never seen. All right. Mullen states that you can cause yourself to experience jamais vu by repeating a word over and over again until it loses its meaning and becomes just a sound. That particularly reminds me of, did you ever see the movie? I want to say it was called Tommy Boy. With Chris Farley? Yes. Do you remember when they accidentally bust open the nitrous and then it seeps into or it seeps into the cop car and they're like high from all the nitrous and they don't know it? And they're like, roads, roads, roads. I keep saying it over and over again and we start laughing with them. <laughs> yeah. And I know that's happened to me too, especially when I learn a new word. Sometimes I'll repeat it over and over again, especially if it's in a foreign language. You know, I'll be saying it and I'm like, you know, these are just sounds that I'm making. So I have had that where you say a word so many times that it loses its meaning. Right. In addition to people thinking that they can predict the future when experiencing deja vu, other popular explanations for it are that deja vu happens when two parallel universes collide. Uh, another popular theory is that it's proof of reincarnation or that it's a glitch in the matrix. While there is no evidence of any of these explanations being true, there is an explanation behind why people feel like they can predict the future. Hmm. Mullen says that the reason this happens is because our brain and memory help us to predict the future in the sense that it helps us not to repeat the same mistakes over and over and to anticipate what's going to happen next. If deja vu affects more areas of the brain than usual, it might touch emotions and stored imagery and give you the feeling of knowing what's coming next. With that said, Isala, do you know what's coming next? <laughs> uh, some questions? <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, that's the end of my questions. But um, what is your thought behind everything that we've learned today? Some of my initial thoughts is I, I found it particularly interesting where you mentioned there's almost a checking system where it's reviewing what you just experienced and whether or not it can or cannot be something you just you previously experienced. And I think that is why I have always associated deja vu more with not that it happened before, but with a dream. I've always thought that it was because I'm somebody who remembers her dreams almost every night. So I immediately go there as opposed to, oh, I know this happened before. No, I, I think it's that system telling me it never happened before. This was most likely in one of your crazy dreams that make no sense. Yeah. And the fact that you can remember the dreams makes you a prime candidate to experience deja vu more than the general population. Yes. That makes a lot of sense. It's very interesting. Do you know what else is coming next, Isela? Uh, probably the end of the podcast. <laughs> very close. Yeah. JCK made her way into our podcast once more because she left us a super awesome review. Yay! Would you like me to read it to you, Isela? Please do. Five stars, just as you demand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she writes, absolutely genuine. I love this podcast so much. I always learn new things with the topics covered by Isela and Jose. The conversation is true, pure, genuine, and continuously entertaining. Oh, thank you, JCK. That really, it's one of those heartwarming reviews. I really appreciate that one a lot. Thank you. 
Yes, thank you so much. She also sent me a message to let us know that she listened to the Superman and Magic Mushrooms episodes and that she loved the podcast. <laughs> she really enjoys hearing each of our perspectives and that she will watch my favorite movie of all time, Batman v Superman. Oh, yeah, that's a it's a really, really good one. So I'm glad that she's finally going to go for it. Yeah. And one note on that, don't watch the theatrical version. Watch the Ultimate Edition. The theatrical version is not very good just because they edited a lot of things that make the movie make sense. Mm, I see. And again, JC is super sweet and super positive, And she has a YouTube channel of her own. So I'm going to link to one of the videos in our show notes where she did a review with James from Freaking Reviews and they review the Taco Bell Mexican pizza. So everyone check it out. Go like her video. Also, JC, you are our super friend of the week. Woo-hoo! Very well deserved. Indeed. I need to check out the one, especially about the review of the Mexican pizza. How amazing and delicious is it? Come on. Exactly. And it'll be in our show notes so you don't have to look very far. Very looking forward to that. On that high note, we hope that you enjoyed the show and you join us again next week. If you're enjoying the show, leave us a review, tell a friend, and subscribe wherever fine podcasts are sold. Follow us on the socials at GreetingsTAC, email us at GreetingsTAC at gmail.com, or leave us a voicemail at 915-317-6669. If you have a story to share with us. Or you have a story to share with us. I wanted to give the uh, deja vu feeling. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, it took a while for my fact checking system in my brain to realize what was happening. <laughs> it's like, you're dumb. <laughs> We want to take a moment to address the June 24, 2022 Supreme Court decision to overturn Roe v. Wade. This decision stripped away the right to have a safe and legal abortion. Everyone should have the freedom to decide what's best for themselves and their families, including when it comes to ending a pregnancy. This decision has dire consequences for individual health and safety and could have harsh repercussions for other landmark decisions. Restricting access to comprehensive reproductive care, including abortion, threatens the health and independence of all Americans. Learn more by visiting podvoices.help.